Hello, friends. Sometimes there's a large concentration of animals in one place on our planet. Animals come together in unbelievable quantities for various reasons. Real hordes of living beings unite in super colonies, which seem to have no end. This often leads to different consequences, which you will learn about in this video. Langwa River in Zambia is one of the major tributaries of the Zambezi River. Every year it dries up at the beginning of the dry season, virtually turning into puddles and causing the local residents to have a hard time. In the absence of the other water bodies nearby, the river attracts many guests. Millions of red-billed weavers flock to its shore. They feed on seeds, but they also need to drink, and the Nile crocodiles are well aware of this fact. Many of these crocodiles haven't eaten in six months, so they don't even mind eating small birds anymore. The dry season marks the beginning of the feeding season for crocodiles, and they aren't the only ones that rely on this time of the year. Southern Karaim bee eaters flew hundreds of kilometers from the Congo rainforests in the peak of the dry season. The sandy shores that get exposed due to the falling water levels make for a perfect nesting site out of reach of the flying predators. Bee eaters can dig holes in the soft sand up to two meters deep but it's better not to settle too close to the neighbors. Birds keep coming and the competition for the best spots grows, but the sun continues to burn the earth for too long, which causes devastating consequences. The homes of the bee eaters collapse, burying many birds under them. Hundreds of nests get destroyed. South Africa has been experiencing dry seasons for thousands of years, but this is something completely different. Record temperatures and the lowest amount of rainfall in 40 years have brought droughts to parts of Africa. The river dried up in several places, forcing the huge male hippos to leave their homes. They have nowhere else to go, so they have to squeeze in the remaining lakes of water, but there's no more space there. The local leader does not want to tolerate another male in his shrinking pool and drives the uninvited guest out. But that doesn't help much. The hippos still have to huddle together continuously being on the verge of death. Hippos overheat quickly and cannot survive without water. One male usually controls an area of about 60 meters, and here, 800 of the most aggressive animals in Africa have to huddle together. They simply don't have a choice. Since people pump out water for irrigation, there's a lot less space than there used to be. The newcomers have to squeeze in somehow because their lives depend on it. Christmas Island in the Indian Ocean. For the past four months, its forest has remained dry and dusty, but all the living things there are waiting for a change now. Monsoon season begins in November, a welcome relief for those suffering from drought. Monsoons are also vital to the island's special inhabitants, the Christmas Island red crabs. They spend the dry season in moist burrows under the foliage. Crabs breathe through their gills, which must remain moist so they can only get out when monsoon season starts. The air gets humid enough for them to begin their journey to the shore. Crabs from all over the island come together, and there are tens of millions of them, 50 million to be exact. They go there to lay eggs, which can only develop in the ocean. But there is one small problem. They may be crabs, but they can't swim. Moreover, they are afraid of water. But they have no choice, they need to release their eggs. Each crab has about 100,000 eggs, so in just a couple of nights, trillions of eggs are released into the ocean. After doing their duty, the crabs return to the forest, and then four weeks later, during the next high tide, the new generation of crabs returns to the same beach. In a good year like this one, countless millions of crabs come to Christmas Island, turning the beaches red, which is quite a spectacular sight. Like their parents, these crabs also need moisture in the air to be able to breathe. Thus, before the rains end, the juvenile crabs make their way to the forest, where they will wait out the coming dry months. There are so many of them that it's truly unbelievable and impossible to describe. They literally cover the ground like a red carpet. Meanwhile, another species of crabs make similar pilgrimages underwater. Once a year, one of Australia's underwater meadows changes its appearance. A whole army of spider crabs comes here in the winter during the full moon. Last year, they searched deeper waters for food, and now they march through the meadows of seagrass. There are hundreds of thousands of them, 
They climb on top of each other, building entire mountain chains up to hundreds of meters long. They aren't looking for their buddies. They aren't laying eggs. They came here to grow. Like all crabs, their body is clothed in a hard shell, and in order to grow, they need to get rid of it. When the shell bursts, a soft animal of a larger size comes out of it. It will take a long time for a new shell to harden. Now the soft crab can hardly move. It's defenseless and therefore in danger. And this terrible invasion happens in the American Midwest once a year, always at the same time. It can be so dense that traffic on the roads virtually stops. This flock can occupy an area of 11.5 square kilometers, and it even appears on the radar. These are mayflies. They came here from the Mississippi River, where they lived as larvae for the past year. They only live one day as adults. These insects appear at the water temperature of 17.5 degrees Celsius, but soon everything will change again. They won't even have the opportunity to try out their new body and wings. For some unknown reason, exactly the same kind of mayfly will appear from the flesh, while the previous individual only gets to live for less than an hour. Soon they will spread their second wings, this time for a mating flight. Uniting into one flock is a guarantee of safety. No one can eat such a congestion of mayflies. Very soon they will return to the Mississippi River to lay their eggs there. To compensate for the billions of mayflies that never manage to come back, each female lays up to 8,000 eggs. It is very easy for them to get lost as they navigate by the moon. But this ancient navigation system is useless in the vicinity of large cities. There are so many artificial lights that they confuse the mayflies and make them lose their way. Mayflies fly further into the city, causing confusion and surprising people. The locals are already used to the scene. There really are a lot of them. 18 trillion individuals appear in just one night, which is 3,000 times more than the population of the entire globe. The invasion often coincides with the most important holiday for America, Independence Day. Fortunately, mayflies are perfectly harmless and have no mouth, so they can't feed, let alone bite. America is celebrating Independence Day, and the mayflies are enjoying their last day. And this is the island of Madagascar, and every 10 years there is an apocalypse there. Rice planting is in full swing, and in three months it could be harvested. That is, if it doesn't get damaged by one of the most destructive creatures on the planet the locusts. These insects are usually lonely, but sometimes when it's raining a lot and the plants grow more and quicker, the number of locusts can increase exponentially. These wingless jumpers can congregate in an army nearly one kilometer long. In five weeks, they turn into adult flying individuals and billions of them can already rise into the air. A swarm of this size can only appear in Madagascar once in a decade, traveling more than 80 kilometers a day they can devour up to 40,000 tons of vegetation, including farmed rice plantations. Nothing can devastate an area with such speed and to such a degree as a plague of locusts. Upon reaching the mountains, this plague is stopped by the powerful mountain rains. The wet wings prevent the locusts from flying and the swarm eventually runs out of food and dies. Friends, that's all for today. Like the video, subscribe to our channel, and see you soon.